This week in Jamaica now, football tragedy, schoolboy collapses and dies at Manning Cup match. This one kind of tough. Mobe Mayhem, 11 shot in St. James, 5 killed. The authorities impose curfews and a pledge to make Mobe better. PNP hierarchy mum on the decision of Norman Horn to step down as treasurer. And the Al Miller press conference after his corruption conviction. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. There was shock and mourning across the nation this week after 18-year-old St. George's College captain Dominic James collapsed during a Manning Cup match against Excelsior High and later died at hospital. The match had to be called off as devastated players reacted to the news. The incidents also reignited concern about the guidelines for medical coverage at sporting events. On Friday, the Education Minister announced that a formal investigation will be launched into the death of the schoolboy footballer. After he collapsed, James was attended to by medical personnel on location. However, he had to be rushed to hospital by his father, David, because there was no ambulance or stretcher at the venue. The St. George's College has indicated that it plans to have an ambulance at all remaining Manning Cup matches. And coach Neville Bell says he is trying to keep the team going. I pray for strength for myself because in, in times like these, you need a strong leader. I don't know how strong this leader is. But I know as long as God is still with us, he will give me the strength to help the youngsters and to help myself. The police on Thursday night imposed a 48-hour curfew in Glen Devon, St. James, in a bid to curtail the violence in the community in which four people were shot and injured this week. Seven other people were killed in various incidents in the parish in a week when five people were killed in St. James. The National Security Minister says additional soldiers have been sent in to support the police, but even then, there are concerns as they seek to repel criminals. A young soldier posed a question to me. He said, Minister, everybody's calling and asking for a response. But if we go down into Montego Bay and we see a young man with an M16, we are in two minds. If I take him on, he might kill me or I might kill him. If he kills me, my family loses me. If I kill him, my family is also going to lose. I said, how? He said, for the next four or five years, we'll have to find attorneys to defend myself with Indicom. Former Police Commissioner Owen Ellington has dismissed assertions that he betrayed convicted pastor Reverend Al Miller. According to Reverend Miller, the former commissioner was aware of plans for him to take then-fugitive Christopher Dudas Koch to the United States Embassy in Kingston in 2010. But Ellington said Reverend Miller was not telling the full story. Reverend Miller this week held a press conference seeking to bring clarity to the matter. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government of Jamaica will not be going ahead with plans to develop a transshipment port and industrial park on the Goat Islands in the Portland Bight protected area. The development comes only days after the International Monetary Fund published the government's Memorandum of Economic and Financial Policies, which said the administration was pressing ahead with the project. Speaking in New York on Thursday night, Prime Minister Holness said while a transshipment project is under consideration, it will not be on the Goat Islands. Jamaica is to make another drawdown of 39.6 million U.S. dollars from the International Monetary Fund after the board approved the performance for the second quarter. The IMF says all quantitative performance criteria were met, as well as the program targets and structural benchmarks. The fund also says Jamaica's program is on track, adding that the country continues its commitment to the demands of the reform program. Human rights lobby group Jamaicans for Justice says there needs to be better supervision of jail cells and prisoners while in police custody. JFJ issued that charge following the nine-man jailbreak from the Denham Town Police lockup on Sunday. One of the men has been recaptured. There is no word from the top brass of the People's National Party about the decision of Treasurer Norman Horn not to seek re-election. There has been tension in the party since Mr. Horn released a report claiming that some senior PNP members pocketed campaign money collected from donors ahead of the 2016 election. Mr. Horn says his decision to leave the post is linked to the report he tabled. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at billionairejm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and before we go, St. George's coach Neville Bell after his team's first match since the death of Captain Dominic James. With Dominic, we were going to do well. We think without Dominic, we are still going to do well. We miss him. 
We love him. I certainly wish he was here. His mother and father, they spent some time with us today. They sat on the bench with us today. They are two of the strongest people I've ever met. And I think because I am, I am this crier, I think a whole lot of people are so concerned about what's going on with me and what's going on with the team. And I've said it before, this is not about us. A mother and father lost their only child. And every time I, I cry, every time I get sad, every time I get depressed, it is because I think of how they might be feeling. It's not about us. I certainly appreciate all the sympathies. I certainly appreciate everyone who's sent all these messages to us to, for us to be strong. But I ask everyone to, to channel those prayers to the family of, of, of Dominic. I call him Alessandro, it's his middle name. He was named after Alessandro Del Piero, that outstanding midfielder from Italy. <laughs>